this video, we'll explore how we can use congruent triangles to prove that lines are parallel to one another. So the three steps that we're going to follow along in order to do this is to, first of all, prove triangles congruent. Second of all, use corresponding parts of those congruent triangles to establish the fact that a special angle pair is congruent. And then lastly, use that special angle pair to force the lines to be parallel. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to write a formal proof for each of the following examples using each one of those steps up at the top of the page. So in number one, we're given that segments AB and CD bisect each other at point E. So I'm noticing the fact that these guys bisect each other. So in other words, AB splits CD into two equal parts, and the two equal parts of CD would be side CE and side ED. And at the same time, CD also splits segment AB into two equal parts, and the two equal parts of segment AB would be AE and EB. That's all the given information, but I also know that the two vertical angles at point E are also going to be congruent. So it's going to be a relatively simple matter to make these triangles congruent by side angle side. My sides will be, or my first pair of sides will be CE and ED. Second pair of sides will be AE and EB. And my pair of angles will be, of course, those vertical angles at point E. So I'm going to go get right down to business in writing this proof. I want to talk about those segments that bisect each other. So segment AB and segment CD bisect each other. And if I want to, I can add at point E. But I can see from the diagram that their point of intersection is at point E, so there's no need for me to write about it in my proof. I know that's true because it's given to me to be true. And due to the fact that those segments bisect each other, I can now go ahead and conclude that segments CE and ED are congruent. And that segments AE and EB are congruent. And my reason for that is that bisectors make congruent segments, or bisectors form congruent parts. So I've talked now about the two pairs of sides. Now I've got to address the congruent angles. Well, I know those angles are congruent to each other because they're vertical angles. So at this point, I have enough to go ahead and conclude that the triangles are congruent. And just make sure when you name the triangles that you name them correctly. So I'm going to call the first one AEC, and I'm going to carefully match up their corresponding parts. So B would correspond with A, E would correspond with itself, and D would correspond with C. And again, my reason making those congruent would be side angle side. And at this point, I know that if those triangles are congruent, CPCTC will tell me that all of their corresponding parts are congruent as well. So I know that this angle up here at C and the angle down here at D must be congruent corresponding parts. Or if I wanted, I could use the angles at A and B. It doesn't make a difference. But I'm going to go ahead and use CPCTC to make angle 3 congruent to angle 4. And why that's important is because if I look carefully at the picture, I can tell that angles 3 and 4 are alternate interior angles for segments A, D, A, C, and B, D. So now that the alternate interior angles are congruent, I'm all set to go ahead and draw the conclusion that line segment A, C is parallel to line segment B, D. And I can say when alternate interior angles are congruent, lines are parallel. So this is a very nice little joining together of what we've learned and used so far in this unit regarding congruent triangles 
with what we learned back in Unit 2 involving parallel lines. At this point, I'm going to suggest that if you have questions about what I said it here, make a note in the margin so that the next time you come back to class, you can make sure that you remember to ask your questions. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this second proof. I'm going to go ahead and mark the given information in the picture. So I can see pretty clearly from the way that I've marked the diagram that the triangles I want to make congruent are triangle ADE and triangle CBF. I could see that I'm going to make them congruent by side angle side. So let me go ahead and write my outline here. So sides AD and BC are congruent. Sides DE and BF are congruent. Angles 1 and 2 are congruent. And that's directly out of the given information. So this is going to be a relatively straightforward proof. So my triangles are congruent by side angle side. I'm going to go ahead and get down to business here. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. That's my pair of angles. DE is congruent to BF. That's my first pair of congruent sides. Segment AD is congruent to segment BC. That's my second pair of congruent sides. And those are all true statements. I know that they're true statements because they're given to me to be true statements. And directly, right because I know those three guys are true statements, I'm all set to go ahead and draw the conclusion that the triangles are congruent. So triangle ADE is congruent to, and again, just be very careful as you name your triangles that you match up their corresponding congruent parts. So I did A, D, E for the first triangle. I'm going to do C, B, F for the second triangle. Again, being very careful to match up their congruent corresponding parts. And the reason I know those triangles to be congruent is by side angle side. And now that those triangles are congruent, I'm all set up to draw the conclusion that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 using CPCTC. And why that helps me is if I carefully examine the diagram, the lines that I'm trying to prove parallel are AE and FC, which would make DB my transversal. So I've got this alternate exterior pair of angles that are congruent to one another. And we all know from Unit 2 that when we have alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles that are congruent to one another, we know that forces our lines to be parallel. So my concluding statement is what I'm trying to prove here, that segment AE is parallel to segment FC. And the reason that I know that that's, those two are parallel is because I've got those congruent alternate exterior angles. So when alternate exterior angles are congruent, or when you have congruent alternate exterior angles, however you want to say it, the result is that lines are parallel. And at this point, I'm ending with the statement that I'm trying to prove so that I know that I'm effectively and efficiently to the end of my proof. As always, many thanks for the gift of your time in watching the video. I do want you to take a few minutes, fill in what you think are the key ideas up at the top of the next page, and then see if you can use your newfound knowledge to go ahead and write a proof for that question on the next page.